Welcome to the Loaded Cannon. You guys know the drill. If your team is top of the table, like this video. Make sure you do that. Arsenal are killing it this season. And after a few weeks of Arsenal not being too great, and perhaps even today we weren't that great, but we'll get into that. But we've finally steadied the ship with back-to-back -back Premier League wins against Aston Villa in unbelievably dramatic fashion. And against Leicester today in a lot more sort of calm, regular fashion. And that's important. Look, against Villa, that was a win that we needed after some bad results, right? But today, you know, we just had a win and we needed something not by any means necessary. We just needed a calm performance to sort of settle the nerves a little bit. And first half, I thought Arsenal were absolutely brilliant. I thought we were dominant, played really, really well. I really felt like the goal was going to come because we played so well, such good football. Unlucky, obviously, not to go in 1-0 up, but we'll talk about that disallowed goal. But actually, the team just calmed my nerves because we were playing really good football. And I thought to myself, if we carry on doing this and even carry on turning the screw, upping the intensity, the goal will definitely come. And as usual, I've spoken about it in my five at fives before, that goal came in the first 15 minutes of the second half. It's first 15 minutes of the first and the second half. This season, there's no better team in the Premier League than Arsenal. We take advantage. We start the games so quick either side of each half that we often get goals in that period. And it's not a coincidence. I've said this before. It's very intentional. It's a tactic. We do have fast starts. And let's talk about the goal. First of all, I'm going to say how happy I am for Gabriel Martinelli to get that goal. Now, I was really, really worried that he got injured. And it looked like a serious injury when he scored the goal because he didn't celebrate, obviously. I think it was Ndidi that stepped on his knee and, and, and Martinelli looked like he was in serious pain. Now, obviously, as a fan, you're not watching the player on the ground. You're watching that ball to make sure it goes on. So I wasn't sure what had happened to Martinelli um, when, when that goal was scored. And I was worried that if you know, it wasn't an impact injury. If no player had touched him, that's when you really need to worry. So, funnily enough, so when I saw the replay that actually someone had stepped on his knee, I thought, oh, at least it's not sort of, you know, a, a more innocuous injury that could be uh, maybe more long-term. Hopefully he can run it off. And that's exactly what he did, thank God. Because I started to feel like, you know what, man? Every time Arsenal score a goal, there just seems to be like, it's not just a simple goal. Either it's a VAR chalked off or it's coming off flipping Emi Martinez's head or a player gets injured. I just want a normal, boring goal. And that's what we got. So thankfully, in the end, that's what we got. Let's talk about the assist from Leandro Trossard, who I thought was brilliant today. Let me know in the comments who you, who you think your man of the match was. But for me, Leandro Trossard, very unlucky with the first goal. We'll talk about that. But the assist was absolute silk. Obviously, long ball comes out. I don't know whether it was an intentional pass to him or not. It might have got a bit of a deflection on the way, but he brings it under his spell and the nutmeg. Brilliant. Now, all of that isn't possible without Martinelli's good off-the-ball forward running, which is something I've been calling out for for so long with Martinelli. But Trossard playing that ball perfectly weighted through the defender's legs into the stride of Martinelli was absolutely lovely. And even his finish for the first goal was absolutely brilliant. But I'm happy for Martinelli because, look, he got dropped in the last game. He was a sub against Villa and obviously came on and scored an open goal. And I did say at the time, I hope that gives him confidence because he came on and had an impact on the game. And today, I thought he was really, really good. One of his better performances in a long, long time. For a lot of, um, for, for a lot of games now, I've been saying, look, he's not doing enough off the ball. He's a bit too predictable in his style of play. He gets the ball facing defenders up. He receives the ball static. He's not running when he receives it. He's not going outside, cutting in, mixing it up. Not enough variation in his game. Today, I saw a lot of that from Martinelli. So I'm really, really glad to see that. I don't know whether that's something that the club has spoken to him about. Coaches have sort of spoken to him about and made it um, something for him to address. Or whether it's just sort of being dropped that made you think, crap, I better step up. Either way, I thought Martinelli was really good today. And I'm really, really happy for him that he was our match winner because he hasn't been the same since the return um, after the World Cup. So brilliant for him. And we're going to need players like Martinelli, like really, really good, talented players. We're going to need them firing on all cylinders if we really want to mount a title challenge. Trossard, as I've said, I thought was brilliant. And let's talk about his goal now that was disallowed. 
Now, I saw Twitter when, um, when that got disallowed. Every Arsenal fan was saying, joke of a decision. And I disagree. Let me know in the comments below whether you think it should have been disallowed or whether you feel like the officials got it wrong. But as far as I'm concerned, look, Ben White was being very sneaky. He knew what he was doing. When you're holding the goalkeeper's hand like that, clearly that's not allowed. It might be soft, and absolutely it is soft, but it is still a foul. Now, before VAR, obviously you're going to get away with that because White was quite clever to do that and also shield it with his own body. So the referee would never be able to see that. But clearly, with all the different camera angles that you get, they came to the right decision in my view. But what frustrates me is that it's such a soft one. And yes, it is a foul, but it's such a soft foul. What about when Suta um, took out Bukayo Saka in the box? What happens then? Did that even go to VAR? I just... It's the inconsistencies that annoy me. So even me as a fan trying to be really honest and objective about the fact that, yeah, they got that one right, I find it frustrating that when it's our turn to get a VAR call, they're not even going to VAR and they get it wrong. Really annoying. Now, with, um, you know, with the hold, hand-holding or whatever, I don't mind Ben White doing that, to be honest with you. I, you know, a lot of people were saying Danny Ward could have just yanked his hand out of the way. But I think that when you're so focused on the ball, you're not really thinking of that. You don't necessarily have that perfect clarity of thought. He's only thinking about the ball. But sometimes you'll get them, other times you won't. And, you know, hey, look, it is what it is. I'm not blaming Ben White, that's for sure. In fact, you know what? Ben White and his colleagues at the back for Arsenal today, I thought were brilliant. Gabriel, for me, was a bit of a standout player potentially one of my man of the matches because I just thought he was dominant. His passing, his duels, I thought he was really, really good, as was Saliba. And Saliba, actually, he was a lot um, more composed in defence today than, for example, Villa. I gave him some criticism for the Watkins goal against Villa. I thought um, Saliba was brilliant today. Ben White and Zinchenko, all good. Now, let me ask you this. Ramsdale, how many shots did he have to save? Not a single one. That's right, Leicester didn't have a single shot on target today. So some Arsenal fans might be, you might have been feeling a bit more positive at halftime. And at full time, you sort of think, oh, we didn't have a very good game today. But let me tell you, that sort of performance are what title challenges are underpinned on. That was a good performance. Don't get it wrong. That was a good performance. Might not be sparkling on an attacking point of view where we've made loads of chances, scored loads of goals. But Leicester didn't even have a shot on target. They had one shot all game. And that was from like 20, 25 yards out. They went wide of the post that Ramsdale had covered. And if that isn't enough for me to convince you that Arsenal were dominant and in full control throughout the whole game today, let me tell you this. Leicester didn't even have a corner. So <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, that shows how well the Arsenal defence did. Jorginho, I thought, also played really well. But I do think that today he showed the weaknesses that we know about in his game. At the back, he can't match opposition players stride for stride. And physically, they can get past him. And, you know, he, he does struggle a little bit. But overall, I thought he was really good on the ball, especially with his forward passing. I was happy with him. Now, what I found strange was when Thomas Partey came on, he almost played further up the pitch than Jorginho. I personally would have put Partey in that more defensive role, especially with a tiring Jorginho. But overall, I was happy with Jorginho. Um, so look, as far as I'm concerned, Arsenal now, we get to relax all weekend. I love it when this happens, when we get a win in nice and early. Now we can all watch Man City play Bournemouth. I said this last time, right, um, when Man City were playing Nottingham Forest, that obviously Man City are going to win, but you never know in this league. Of course, I'm expecting a Man City win, but let's see what happens. Arsenal have done their job. That is the main thing, and that's what we have to do. So that's it. I'm very, very happy. Arsenal dominant in control over to Man City and I'll see you tomorrow for our five at five. Take care.